Now it's time to get ready for our main event. Juan Manuel Marquez, as Max and Manny talked about, long known as being one of the best featherweights in during his time, but there have been some disappointments. He's had some frustrations. We will talk about that as he tries to elevate his status to a higher stage. As for Jim Rex Haka, he is from the Philippines like Manny Pacquiao. He is a southpaw like Manny Pacquiao. But that's pretty much where the similarities stop, at least for now. Haka is more of a counter puncher and not quite the Tasmanian devil that we see out of Manny Pacquiao. But he will certainly be trying to make a name for himself tonight on HBO. Well, we just showed you Manny Pacquiao taking on Eric Morales. One fighter who gave Pacquiao one of his most difficult bouts is the fighter who you're going to see in our main event, Juan Manuel Marquez. It happened two and a half years ago. Marquez at the time was a title holder. In the first round, Pacquiao was explosive. Getting to Marquez not one time, not twice, but three times sending Marquez to the can canvas, all with left hand, Manny. But after that, yeah, that's what's Marquez what, settled down a little bit. That's why I think that Marquez has a very good chance of beating Pacquiao in a rematch because he actually started off like losing on a point system like four rounds down before the fight started. And still, with the remaining eight rounds, he ended up with a draw. So to me, the that was almost the same as a victory. Draw. So I think that Marquez not getting hurt in the first round may have possibly won the decision in that fight. And Marquez uh, has not had a fight as big since oh. then, but he still believes that he's ready to be in the ring again with Pacquiao and also uh, Max Marco Antonio Barrera. The problem for him tonight is that Jim Rex Haka might not be the type of opposition that he needs to face to look impressive to wow over the fans here. Uh, Juan Manuel Marquez says that the thing he's most proud about the Pacquiao fight is that he demonstrated to the world that to, to beat him, you have to kill him. Well, that's not true. You come to kill Juan Manuel Marquez, you lose. To beat him, you have to box him, as Freddie Norwood did, as Chris John did recently, as Haka will try to do tonight. And that puts Marquez in a very tough position because he's old for a south of lightweight fighter. 33, by the way. Older than Pacquiao, older than Morales, older even than Barrera. He's actually the <laughs> oldest of this quartet. And so the clock is ticking on his career. Most people would like to see Marquez fight Barrera next. Barrera's the bigger name. Marquez has to make a statement here tonight to get Pacquiao next. It's going to be tough against the guy who's here to box him. His back is against the wall. The stage is set for one of the best pound for pound fighters of the last seven or eight years. He's been maybe the best featherweight this entire time. Uh, it's a tall order. I'll tell you what, earlier in his career, he may not have been willing to admit that he needed to look spectacular, but he did tell us today, you know what, I need to look impressive to see if I can regain inside the public's consciousness. All right, tail the tape now uh, for this 126 pound bout between Juan Manuel Marquez and Jim Rex Jaca. And there you see, Max talked about the age difference. Marquez, 10 years older than Haka. They are both 5'7". The arm length, which is measured from the armpit to the end of the fist, Marquez with a two and a half inch advantage. Both fighters making the 126 pound weight limit here. When they stepped on our unofficial HBO scales, both fighters weighing in at 136 pounds. All right, the rules of the bout now with our unofficial ringside score, Harold Letterman. The one man Ron Marquez, Jim Rex Haka fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. The patient cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Friend. Jim Rex Haka from Dumaguete City, Philippines, just 23 years old. This is only his second fight in the United States. He turned pro when he was 16 years old. What can we expect, Max, from Haka inside the ring? Boxing, boxing, and more boxing. He's a southpaw who uses the perimeter of the ring, and he will try to do that against Juan Manuel Marquez, who's a devastating counterpuncher, not only because he's accurate, but because he hits with real power, particularly with the left hook. It, a closer look now on Haka with Max Kellerman. Well, his given name is Jemuel Divino. Jim Rex is the name of his gym, and Haka is his father's name. It's 
typical in that part of the world to name yourself after the gym from which you uh, fight. He is used to earning $1 per round. He started his pro career four rounds, $4. That's not a euphemism for $4,000. That's $4, six rounders, $6. I wonder if he thinks he's fighting 50,000 rounds tonight because he's getting 50,000 bucks. And this is a huge step up. He's fighting, as we mentioned, uh, one of the very best fighters in the world in any weight class. Won his first 22 fights, but he is 4-2-1 since then. Juan Manuel Marquez from Mexico City, Mexico. Started boxing at eight years old. Started his amateur career at 13 years old, Manny. This is the guy who comes from a fighting family. His father was a professional, had about 40 fights. This guy's had a great career, but not the kind of career that he believes he'll be remembered for. Why not? Well, you know, he's found one of those fighters, unfortunately, like Mike McCallum and many fighters of the past who great fighters and just happened to be in unfortunate situations at certain times in his career. He did not get a chance to fight Barrera when he could have possibly because Barrera and he was both promoted by the same promoters. And the reason he didn't get to fight Nassim Hamid and Morales is simply because he was just too good. And these guys did not want to take a risk at him because they were big money attractions and he wasn't. He was just too good. All right, a closer look at Juan Manuel Marquez with Max Color. Well, he along with his brother Rafael Marquez, I think are the best brother tandem in the history of boxing. Maybe Mike and Tommy Gibbons from the from the teens and 20s of the last century, but I think they're better than the Klitschko's, better than the Ruelas's, and, and better than the Canizales's, better than the Quarries. And the interesting thing is it's not clear which one is better. They're both totally excellent. They're married to sisters. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's pretty interesting. And uh, it's really been a lost opportunity in Marquez's career. He could have made three quarters of a million against Pacquiao for an immediate rematch, turned it down, and has made much less in subsequent fights. All right, uh, for the official introductions, let's send it into ring announcer Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, before beginning our main event of the evening, we'd like to take this opportunity to remember one of the true legends of the sport of boxing. An individual who not only embodied every aspect of the sweet science with his brilliant defensive skill and his masterful boxing technique that earned him two world titles, but also a very well-deserved spot in boxing's Hall of Fame. And as we do with all fighters, and members of the boxing community who have passed on. We honor their memory and their contribution to the sport with boxing's traditional 10 count. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and a moment of silence in honor of one of the all-time greats, Willie Pep. Un momento de silencio, por favor. Gracias. To a true boxing legend, ladies and gentlemen, may he rest in peace. Que descanse en paz. Thank you. And now, from Dodge Arena, Hidalgo, Texas, we welcome you to an evening of boxing after dark being brought to you by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with the Mexican state of Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Tierra de Encuentro, Tampico Energy Drink, the new Tampico Energy Drink is El Mas Bravo and HBO Sports. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds for the interim WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Supervising for the WBO, Luis Perez. The judges are Rocky Burke, Dr. Ruben Garcia, and Levi Martinez, the referee, Lawrence Cole. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines and Mexico face off once again in the ring to find out who is El Mas Macho. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner and wearing the colors of his homeland, red, white, and blue. He weighed in at an official 123 and three-quarter pounds. His professional record, 
27 victories with only two losses, one draw, and 12 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Negros Oriental, the Philippines, Jim Reds, the executioner. Across the ring in the red corner. Dressed in the colors of Mexico, green, white, and red. Weighing in at 124 and one half pounds. He maintains an impressive professional record consisting of 45 victories. With three losses, one draw, and 34 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The former WBA and IBF featherweight champion of the world. And the defending WBO interim featherweight champion de la Ciudad de México de F. Juan Manuel instruction on the dressing room. Obey my commands, fix up at all times. Good luck. Let us work that. Play land back. Max, you mentioned that uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, 33 years old, and for uh, a fighter in the division south of 130, it's old for him. How has he been able to stay young as he believes he's still on his prime? One of the things that has held him back in terms of his marketability is he fights dispassionately and uh, doesn't take unnecessary risks, doesn't get hit a lot, but it also means maybe he has a little more left in the tank. And also, even though he's maybe older than the of those guys, he has not been in any war fight that I can remember. The only one was Pacquiao, but other than that, he's been able to get through his fights just using his skills, so therefore he isn't as much worn and torn as the, as the other fighters are. He's younger in boxing years. The boxing years is much younger. Herrera and the guys, Moranison has done a lot of big super fights. I'll tell you what, so far, Haka is taking, making the fight a little more than anticipated. Marquez in the traditional Mexican colors. Haka in the red and blue. He is a southpaw. Marquez says, no worries. Four of the last six fighters who he's faced have been southpaws. Now he gets a little nervous. He's got to go up against a conventional fighter, and there you see Marquez land a straight right. Marquez is fighting a lot more aggressive than he normally and punching with a lot more authority. He seems to be very determined to be impressive tonight. He does, but I'll tell you one thing. Haka has fast hands, and he's making Marquez's hands look a little slower, I think, than they normally look. Yeah, but Marquez is going for power tonight, I think, more so than technical. Marquez got burned two fights ago. He lost a decision that more than a few observers thought he should have won in Indonesia against Chris John, who is undefeated. Manny mentioned he's going for power. As, as you mentioned earlier, friend, he even acknowledges he's looking for the KO tonight. He, I never heard him say something like that. Yeah, and he's got caught with a beautiful straight left right there by Haka. Haka oh. doing work to the body, but Marquez spins him around and now goes to town in the corner. This could turn out to be a much more exciting fight than we all expected. Uh, it was a left hook from Marquez. Marquez and Haka trading blows, and we're just two minutes into the first round. You know, I thought that Hawker was going to be more of a boxer looking at the films of him in the past, but he's seemingly trying to be a power puncher tonight, the same as Marquez. It means we have a good, exciting fight on our hands. Marquez doubles up with the left hand and unloads the right in a nice combination. He's fighting a fast southpaw from the Philippines, but this one doesn't hit like a ton of bricks as Pacquiao does. Stuff here in the opening round of a scheduled 12 rounder between Juan Manuel Marquez and Jim Rex Aka. Jim Rex is trying to land almost the same identical straight left through the center that Paco was so effective with when he fought Marquez. When we go to the corner of Aka, 
they speak Tagalog, Ernie Kalug will translate, and when we go to the corner of Marquez where they speak Spanish, you will hear the voice of Jerry O'Reilly. You hit you on the side, eh? How's everything? Everything's doing well. Box them. Remember to box. Relax. Don't get carried away. I only need one second, so okay. you need to get out. Don't get carried away. Relax. Right after Marquez had got caught with a good straight left from Haka, then he put Haka in the corner and started to unload himself. Copy box numbers in round one. Marquez, 18, landing 18 out of 54. Haka, 18 out of 80. I thought that replay was a great illustration of technically how good Marquez is. On offense, you saw it there, straight right hand. Excellent uppercut, left hook. And there you see how Harold Letterman scored the first round, and he gave it to the youngster from the Philippines, Haka. This fight was supposed to take place just over a month ago. Haka had some visa problems. And in between now and then, he has joined Golden Boy Promotions. I respectfully disagree with, with Harold, which doesn't often happen, I find, but I think that it was Marquez who did some of the hurting in that round, although. Couldn't tell if Marquez just was off balance or if he got rocked. Seems to be steady on his feet now. Marquez is a, a wee tad slower than he normally is, I think, because he's trying to fight for power tonight. Normally he's a lot faster and a lot more elusive with his upper body movement. And the way he's fighting right now, this is anybody's fight because he himself got caught with a right hook, even though he might have been off balance. It could have been a facial knockdown still. He just landed a straight right. Nope. And, and also, Haka just landed a left a little <laughs> uppercut inside. There we go, nice man. <laughs> You know, going into this fight, it doesn't seem like this is the kind of fighter that would prepare you for Manny Pacquiao. And yet, Manny, it looks to me like Haku's fighting similarly to Pacquiao in many respects. A little slower version, not as intense, not as fierce, but still definitely a version of Pacquiao. And main thing is not the punching power. There is a cut over the left eye, I believe, of Jim Rex Haka. And there you see what Marquez does so well. He leaned back and he counterpunched with his left. But Hawk has counterpunched at him also sometimes when he comes in. By simply moving back, which is interesting because I thought he would be moving around a lot more, but Hawk is just taking a little step back sometimes. Just enough to let Marquez miss. Over time, class tells. Let's see if it tells in this fight if Marquez can make adjustments and start to pull away. Marquez trying to end round two with a flurry. They will go to work on the cut of Jim Rex Haka in between rounds. Sit down, sit down. One, two. What's your defense? What's your defense? You're doing real good. Real good. But be careful. Don't go in too carelessly. Here we said Haka land a right hook as Marquez was coming in. And it, no, no, I'm sorry, it's a left. And he lost his balance, but. Still, it could have been con controversial knockdown if his gloves had touched the floor because he would not have went down without being hit. 
Agreed. This is just the second fight in the United States for Haka. The last one was pretty impressive against Geronimo Hernandez. It was a uh, first round TKO. He's fighting on the undercard of uh, Pacquiao Morales too. He, he's given Marquez a lot of problems because of the little step that he pulls back a lot, just enough to make Marquez get out of position himself. Instead of throwing punches and just staying there, he punches it in, he pulls back just enough, like he does right there. Nice and wide left hook uh, shook Haka. Manny, I've heard you describe Tito Trinidad in his prime as a killer robot. He figured out what he needed to do in the first few rounds, and then he executed. And uh, Marquez throughout his career has reminded me of that. It's still early in the fight. Generally, he starts to dominate as the rounds go on. I don't know if he's going to be that effective. This guy seems to have his number here tonight. This kid is fighting a very intelligent fight. Very elusive up in his upper body right there. Very focused. And Marquez cannot get a good consistent rhythm going with any combinations. By Haka. But it was blocked with such force from Marquez that it I think it did a little something. And I think Ditto on that one. Yeah. It was blocked, but uh, there was some uh, pepper coming off that from Marquez. And I've seen Haka miss a little bit more in this round than he was earlier. Yeah, but the one thing we know that once Haka slows down at all, Marquez is going to step it up, take it to another level. See Marquez applying a little more pressure here. It's not only that, but Hawker was always keeping that little distance between them. He's not that effective with it now, I think, because he's tiring a little bit. Where he was always pulling back. Now Marquez is beginning to get his range now. Marquez showed you a little bit of the speed that he says he has left. He looks like a slower fighter to me than he did. He looks slower to me. Ago. I agree. He looks slower. He looks seasoned, very professional, but still slow. At least compared to this guy. Marquez starting to settle into the fight now. Haka unloads an uppercut. Haka's punch output slows down just a little bit. Marquez trying to steal another round with a flurry at the end. And the crowd here at Dodge Arena on its feet. How are you feeling? All right. Very nice. Very nice. But wait, wait a bit. Hit in the middle of the body. What's your head? What's your head? Jab. You should have a cut. You should combination. It's your hand. Let's go. Let's go. There you see Bernard Hopkins and Oscar De La Hoya. The two powers behind Golden Boy Promotions who Marquez is now with. As is Jim Rex Haka. Let's bring in Harold Letterman to see how he has to the fight. Uh, okay, way. Fred. Two rounds to one. 29 28, Jim Rex Haka. That, it, that first drive was very, very close. Could have gone either way. I was really surprised at the style of Jim Rex Haka. I mean, this is two guys standing there fighting on a dime. In any case, the second round, Haka staggered him. I thought he won that. But round three, one man, one man, one mark has had his best round of the fight. Two to one, Haka. not uncommon for Marquez to start slowly. It is uncommon to see him fight with this kind of passion. He seems to be not only fighting aggressively, but 
like he really is trying to take this guy's head off. Both fighters now opening up a little bit here in the fourth round. If he had Max this kind of passion in previous fights, he maybe then would have gotten the fights that he wanted to have. Or perhaps okay. he wouldn't have won some of those fights and not been where he, you know, not okay. been as dominant as he was. All right, touche. But that's that's the um, the tightrope that Barrera has walked in recent years, where he's become technical when he's needed the win, and exciting when he was clearly better than the other but guy. But that's following a long career where he was explosive. Yes. Nice overhand right from Juan Manuel Marquez. Haka now uh, trying to lead with the left hand. Hawker doesn't have the punching power, Marquez, but he's fighting a very good fight and thus far this round. Simon is winning the round. Normally against Southpaw's Manny, guys are on guard for that straight left hand and don't see the right hook. Marquez seems to be caught with that straight left hand a little more than you'd anticipate. Yeah, I know that I'm really beginning to have a lot of second thoughts about the fight with Pacquiao because Pacquiao punches with a lot more speed and power than the Hawker. On the other hand, the fact that he looks vulnerable still, he is fighting a southpaw with a good straight left hand, and that's put him in kind of the, you know, he's active against a guy like that. Might that not be an advantage against Pacquiao in a, in a rematch? But what, what I'm just, what, what's, uh, I'm concerned about, Marquez seemed to have lost just a little step in his speed, mm -hmm. and you can't do that with a guy like Pacquiao. How you feeling? Hey. You good? Yeah. Good. You won the round, but be careful. Don't come in with your head. Careful with your head. Take over the fight. Right here, you can see Hawker landing little short punches here. Not enough power on him, but still, he's became a much busier fighter than he had been the last round. And as a result, he's probably back into the fight Let's on go, the scorecard, whether it's according to what Harold score or the Fisher score. But I see it as a close competitive fight on the scorecards now. I think it's an even fight. And you saw uh, Hawker's uh, corner, Jose Reyes there, the cut man, uh, with that uh, cut under control over Hawker's left eye. In the fifth round of a scheduled 12 rounder here at Dodge Arena in Hidalgo, Texas, Fran Charles alongside Emmanuel Stewart and Max Kellerman. And this was supposed to be a rebirth here for Juan Manuel Marquez. He's got his hands full. He does, but I'll tell you what, should he come out with a win here? I think this is more in his interest than it would have been to just chase a guy around for 12 rounds. Well, the opponent is fighting him perfectly, and especially if he's looking forward to fighting Pacquiao. He's got a watered-down version of Pacquiao right here in front of him. This is why some fighters don't watch tape, and Haka says he doesn't watch tape of his opponents. Because maybe the guy on the tape isn't the guy you face. Box. Well, gamesmanship maybe there by Marquez Haka. He wanted to make sure everything was all good. Marquez wouldn't touch gloves. And now Stop. there's a cut. Stop. Time. Neutral corner right there. Right there. Come Over on. the right eye, it's a gash. And it's, and it's bleeding. It's kind of spouting blood. I think it came from a Accident punch, too. Headbutt. Accidental. Uh. Accidental. Accidental. Accidental headbutt. All right, referee Lawrence right. Cole says it came from an accidental headbutt. Okay. Box. Could have, because it's a very hard. Uh, Bad cutter when you see two heads bumped together. That's what happens when two skulls crash. The flesh in between gets busted. Very bad cut. I'll tell you what, if Harold's scorecard's right, that puts Marquez in some trouble. 
And Marquez, you can tell, sensing he doesn't want the fight to be in danger because of the cut. Going to work here in the fifth round. This is the fifth fight that we know of with Haka where headbutts have been an issue. We have not seen Marquez in his career, except for the Pacquiao fight, vulnerable. And that's it's that kind of invulner invulnerability that has made him perhaps less marketable than, say, Barrera, who seemed more human through the years. Blood now. Come back from a from a, a, a bad cut over his eye, down perhaps on points. Yeah, see what happens. To beat a guy, that will go a long way towards making him a more popular fighter. Marquez shot a big volley trying to, you know, get even after getting cut. And now that he's trying to take a little break, Hawk is trying to take control again. Blood streaming down the right side of Marquez's face. Miguel Duran will go to work on Marquez's cut. Damn headbutt. Is it okay? Don't worry about it. It's all right. I can't change the way they fight, though. I can't change that. Accidental. Bring your head up. All right, that's it. You should uppercut. You should want to cut the Watch your hand. Defense on the hip. Defense on the hand. Come on. Go. The headbutt happening in the fifth round, an accident headbutt, but the fight is stopped due to the headbutt, they will go to the scorecards to determine a winner. Power punches in round five, about even. Marquez landing 14 of 43, Haka 12 of 40. Nice right hand from Juan Manuel Marquez. Sometimes when fighters aren't good anymore, as good as they used to be, you find out if they're great. And Marquez, though he has some wins against guys like Derek Gaynor and Manuel Medina, has never had the signature win against a top guy. He drew with Pacquiao. He lost to Freddie Norwood, controversially. Rock Taka there with two rights. Some, should he win dramatically here, that's something new in his portfolio, and I think raises his profile among the top fighters in this weight class. does seem to be fighting harder since the cut. And he's, to me, landed more punches in the fight, clean punches, than Hata. But Haka still seems to be so relaxed and seems to be very comfortable with the situation and has been able to take all of the power shots from Marquez, which means that it could be a tough fight for Marquez as it goes down the stretch. Well, it wouldn't be a dramatic win if it wasn't against the determined guy. Yeah, Marquez is fighting very determined. I'm very impressed with that. But I'm also equally impressed with this young guy who seems to be unawed about this pro-Mexican crowd, when particularly they're excited about what, after what happened with Pacquiao in the Mexican last week. I mean, showing some maturity, man. A lot of maturity, yeah. Really is. He's getting hit, and it doesn't seem to be taking the fight out of him. Pockets. Manny, it was only a couple of weeks ago where your fighter, Vladimir Klitschko, he suffered a cut, and we saw his pace pick up a little bit. Yeah, but that's what, that's what good fighters do. When you tell them to pick it up, at least they go out and they try to. And I think Marquez has tried to do the same thing. Good right hand. Good right hand. Marquez landing flush upstairs on Jim Rex Haka. Very determined fighter. Now, I like what Marquez is doing. He used to throw that long one-two, and Hopper was getting out of the way of it, but now he's just getting close to shooting a right-hand lead off the bat now instead of the one-two. And he's been more effective. There it is again. By shooting the right-hand without shooting the left, he's been more effective, and Hopper can't time it. 
The blood streaming down on the right side of Marquez's face. You see him wiping it off. In between, firing big shots. Fellas, safe to say, not what we expected halfway through the bout. Definitely not what I expected. A pleasant surprise. That's right. <laughs> It's a much better fight than I expected. Me la grafita. You're doing good. You're okay. Don't worry about it. Mark Vaseline, how are you feeling? Here we see the head button that caused the, the, the bad cut right there. You see the blood coming in immediately right after the head's clash. And Manny, not unusual. You have a conventional fighter taking on a softball and Second fighters time. trying to get in. And then, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that are totally different and unexpected to me Second in this particular fight. You know, Marquez is Sunday punches his left hook, and he has not been able to land that very cleanly very often. It's no. a straight right hand, and maybe that's one of the reasons Haka's still around this late in the fight, despite the fast pace. All right, we are through six rounds. Harold, how do you have it? Okay, friend, 58. 56, one man, one Marquez. Fred, I gotta tell you, I think this kid's won four rounds in a row. I'm talking about Marquez. Even with the bleeding, even with the blood going in his eye, he's landed a great right hand and he's winning these rounds. But I wanna say something. You were right about we go to the scorecards after the fourth round, the case, you know, the fighters stopped by that cut. But I gotta say this, if the fight is stopped in the middle of the round, you score the partial round. So therefore, you gotta start fast in every round, make sure you don't lose the first half, because you gotta score that partial round. Four to two, Marquez. Marquez catches Haka with a left uppercut. Haka has a good chin. That's the only reason he hasn't been knocked out, because Marquez is calling him with good punches, and Marquez punches good with both hands. Even though he punches good with the left hook, he has a good right hand. But Haka just takes a good punch. Not only is this the kind of fight that will endear Marquez to the fans, but maybe it will make other top fighters think that he's more vulnerable than he used to be and therefore make it easier to make some of those top fights. Well, that is truly the case, I believe. I think he's, he gets hit a little bit more than he used to, but he's fighting a lot more, too. Haka yeah. momentarily there uh, thought he got hit low. Lawrence Paul was having it. If it was, it was a straight punch on the belt line, so it means that maybe mentally he's starting to fall apart a little bit. But there was nothing serious about the low blow. A oh, nice uppercut by Marquez, and then he does a nice job of stepping back to get some separation, and he comes back with a left. I mean, for Marquez, he just landed a right uppercut right. from the outside against a world-class southpaw. Yeah, That's and, so, I mean, and, how do you do something like and that? And no punch has wobbled this boy Hawker yet still. He's been hit with some tremendous shots, but none of the punches have caused him to get in any trouble. Manuel Marquez, as I mentioned, he lost two fights ago. Unanimous decision to Chris John in Indonesia. He counterpunched his way through that fight, even though he thought he won it. In his last fight against Turtsak Chandang, we saw this type of effort from Marquez. He's fighting a very good, exciting, power-punching fight tonight, and very determined. The fight was stopped in the seventh with Marquez winning. Marquez, the Norwood fight, most people thought he won. He lost the decision. The Chris John fight also, most people thought he won. I thought both fights were very close. But in Marquez's mind, he's an undefeated fighter. Eight rounds, eight rounds. You should time it. 
Somebody thought, huh? This is where you got to dig in, baby. Oh. You got to dig in, all right? Yeah, we're up here. All right. Tell me that. Tell me that. Juan Manuel Marquez comes right out in the beginning of the eighth round and lands a left hook. Hawk is getting the biggest payday of his career, as you mentioned, Max, $50,000. He says he plans on going back to the Philippines. He wants to build a house. He has a wife. You can build a couple in the Philippines with 50 grand. He looks like a million bucks tonight, though, considering the level of opposition. He's really fighting a spirited, inspired kind of fight. He says he has no other hobbies. Uh, boxing is it. It should be said also as we watch Marquez and you think about Pacquiao. People are talking about Barrera in a rematch with Pacquiao. Barrera got knocked out in five rounds. Marquez drew in a fight I actually thought he won. Many people did. He didn't lose to Pacquiao. He drew. It was two and a half years ago, though. Yeah, but, I, but I since then, you know, Barrera got blitzed. Right there, Morales got blitzed twice. The second bite. You okay? Okay. The second bite. Okay. The second bite. Right there. Come in. Box. All right, Lawrence Cole. Letting us know. It's a second accidental headbutt. And you can see once again, Marquez wants to take matters into his own hands. Haka standing right there with him going toe to toe. But Haka came right to him as he uh, sure uh, did. met him punch to punch. What an exchange. What a great exchange. It's, you know, Haka's going right to him. He's not taking it easy. Both guys are meeting each other head on. Blood streaming down his face, Fred. Down Mar uh, Marquez's face in a furious exchange with a determined and contender. If, if they go to a scorecard, based on what I'm seeing, Marquez still could win the fight, possibly. Well, he's not trying to win on the scorecard. No, they're going for the knockout, both guys. Marquez sensing the danger with the cuts. Blood now covering the right side of his face. Right there. Come here. Come on. Come on, Wani. You have like how many guys? Your head on the scorecard. Okay. When you see, when you see, how many people I got? Y'all want up? All right. Hang on. Come in. It's a little odd there, Lawrence Cole telling yeah. uh, Marquez he was ahead on the scorecard. Definitely odd. I'm uh, very sad about. It. I don't recall ever hearing it. He's basically telling him, he, it sounds as though he's implying if you decide you don't want to fight on because of the cut, you're going to win. And Marquez, to his credit, wants to fight on. That's no small thing, folks. His face is ripped open, well, how, and he wants to fight on. How could Lawrence Cole have any idea That's what the what scorecard I'm, said? I don't know how he can know, and if he did know, it's very unusual and seemed like out of order for him to tell the one of the boxers that is, but. Well, they're talking about open scoring in fights, guys, and that's the kind of stuff that would happen in an open scoring system. Guys would quit if they were ahead. How are you feeling? You're tired? No, no. Go on, you've got to attack his body. Attack his body. If not, it's going to be more difficult. Tell the referee about the head, but. I can't change other guy's style. He's not doing it on purpose. I can't. I can't take points away. It's accidental. I cannot take points away. Yeah, you see another head button, but I don't think none of them was an intentional, it's just the style of the two fighters. The way that the heads keep clashing. 
Well, you heard Lawrence Cole say, I can't take another point away because he's doing it accidentally. It's just his style. Marquez with a 25 to 9 advantage in power punches in the eighth round and 30 to 17 Mike. overall. It, when a southpaw fight, fights an orthodox fighter, it's that happen. happens. It's There's happen. a, there are going to be headbutts. By the way, I said fighters would quit in an open scoring system. There are, there are pros and cons to open scoring. That is a potential con that fighters with less heart than Marquez would quit knowing they were ahead in the fight. And a lot of fighters, once they realize that they are comfortable here on points, they would just actually run the rest of the fight, even if there's no cut involved, just on points, which is what you see a lot in international amateur boxing, which makes it so boring now. Once a guy finds out he's seven to two ahead, he says, oh, I got three more rounds to go, I just run. It's, to Marquez's credit, he's not looking just to win, but to win in a way that will kind of tip the scale away from Barrera and towards him in terms of public demand for a Pacquiao fight. And he's got four more rounds to go all together. Just the fight is still just a third of the way to get still left to go. That's a long time when you're bleeding like that. And the guys, uh, a point that was just brought to my attention from the truck, Marquez may not have even known what Lawrence Cole was saying. He may not have understood him. Good point. Hawkins wanted to take advantage of the situation. Marquez's corner doing a nice job on that cut because it is uh, hardly as much of an issue, the blood that is as it was in round eight. Really nice job, you're right. If, uh, Nacho Bernstein happens to be his trainer, cut man, and manager. He's doing it all, huh? And has been his manager since he was a kid. I guess when he was about eight or nine years old, he's been always the, the boxing guy in his life, for he and his brother Raw. Rafael. Rafael. Haka now trying to do some work against the ropes, and he comes back with a strong left hook to the body. Oh, big left hook by Marquez. He doubled up, and it floors Haka. I'm surprised. I don't think Haka knows where he is quite. No, he probably didn't see the punch. But it seemed like he was aware, but just totally just confused. That's his Sunday punch, Manny, the left hook. When he catches you with a hook clean, you got to go. Great, great victory for Marquez. Jim Rex Haka seemingly was taking everything that Juan Manuel Marquez had to offer until he got caught with a double left hook. Well, out for this victory, I would love to see Marquez get a super fight with Pacquiao. Win or lose, he deserves it. Has he tipped the scales for you away from Barrera and towards himself for the next guy for Pacquiao to fight, Manny? He has, he has for me. I think because of the drama of this fight compared to Barrera's last victory, the public would probably want to see Marquez now more so than Barrera, which I wanted at first. And there you see the knockout right there. And watch it with the left hand from Marquez. Doubles up, and it was the second one that put Haka on a seat, and he didn't move from that point on. You might be wondering, why isn't he trying to get up? I think it's a case of him just being not knowing where he is. I'm still confused. I cannot figure that out. It seemed like he's aware. Yeah, he's, he's not really hurt that much, the fact that he's setting up, not on his back. But nevertheless, he was knocked out. He did. He looked, he looked cognizant of what was going on, but sometimes a fighter can look that way and still be totally dazed and confused. That's what we want to see as fight fans. His face torn open against a young, determined, fast guy who's not scared of him. Lupe Contreras is ready, Max, with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end with an official time.
of two minutes, 48 seconds of the ninth round, your winner. By way of knockout and still, WBO interim featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez. Juan Manuel Marquez gets a knockout in the ninth round against a young tough customer from the Philippines but tonight was Marquez's moment almost a, a coming out party for a guy Manny who had a great fight against Manny Pacquiao a couple years ago and seemingly was looking to duplicate that feat. All right final copy box punch stat numbers on the night for the fight between Marquez and Haka. And there you see Haka was busy, stayed in there, hung tough, threw 16 more punches, but Marquez landing 50 more total punches, landing at a connect percentage of 36%. And here you see the damage that Marquez inflicted, always almost getting the last punch, and in the power punching range, throwing more than 70 plus more and landing almost 60 more, Manny than Jim Rex Haka. Max Kellerman is standing by with a winner. Standing by with three of the best fighters of the last 15 or 20 years. Juan Manuel, congratulations. Assess your performance. Gracias. Estoy muy contento. Fue una gran pelea. Yo creo que la gente salió. I'm very happy. It's been a great fight. Salió muy emocionada. The people came out with lots of emotion. You haven't been in a fight like this except for Pacquiao where your face was busted up and you were in with a determined guy where you had to maybe come from behind early to score a knockout. Were you determined to score the knockout? Sí, yo creo que queríamos ganar por knockout, gracias a Dios, y se logró la pelea. Yes, wanted to win by knockout. Thankfully, el, el, el médico me decía si podía ver. The doctor kept asking sí, me if I could see, and pelea. I said yes, but I thought he wanted to stop the fight. The ref in fact said that you were up on the scorecards. Were you aware that the ref told you that? No, I didn't, I didn't know he didn't say anything to me. We knew that we were winning, though. But the doctor wanted to stop it, but I wanted to keep going. You wanted to keep going because you know you have to do something dramatic to drum up interest in a rematch with Pacquiao? No, I think I did my job, a good job. Haka is a great fighter, and we should both receive great opportunities. Did this kid surprise you at all? Did he remind you of Pacquiao? Pacquiao is one thing, Haka is another thing. They're both great fighters. But we were prepared for everything. Congratulations, Juan Manuel. Thank you. I want to send a salute to some friends that I have in Jalisco. A un so amigo que le dice Toto family, a, mi, a mi familia Jalisco. y a todos los que siguen mi carrera. Toto and all that follow me, thank you. Thanks. Guys. All right, Max, thank you very much. And Manny, uh, you went both ways, because at first you said you didn't know if Marquez could hang with Pacquiao once you saw the fight, you saw the way it was going, and then I think you were impressed uh, by his fortitude and his courage throughout mm -hmm. the uh, rest of the fight. I was actually impressed by both both fighters tonight. Uh, for a young fighter, never been in this type of situation. I thought Hawker did very well, but I love the dramatic finish. You know, I love knockouts anyway. I wish every fight could end in a knockout. But uh, to come back after being cut like that and having such a rough fight and come back with a one-punch knockout couldn't get me any better than that. So as a result of that, I really hope that he gets his chance to fight for the championship of the world against Pacquiao. I think he deserves it. Uh, whatever Tyler's pocket yeah. holds. <laughs> yeah. And incidentally, we just got the word uh, Aka unbelievably didn't win a round on any of the scorecards, any of the judges' scorecards. So, so much for her. A lot of them scoring tonight. Uh, it's a little <laughs> not quite what we expected. Max, what do you expect now uh, from Juan Manuel Marquez after this impressive showing? Well, I, yeah. I said it was a missed opportunity uh, against Pacquiao. When they turn down three quarters of a million to fight him, you never can tell. Maybe he makes more than that for a Pacquiao rematch now. Let's keep in mind, Marquez has never been decisively defeated in spite of fighting Pacquiao. And I am someone who thinks that 
I've never seen him lose. In fact, on my scorecard, Marquez has won every professional fight he's ever had, including against Manny Pacquiao. I'd rather see that guy fight Pacquiao next than a guy, Barrera, who was blitzed in five rounds. Marquez uh, may be the guy that the boxing insiders want to see. Barrera's got the bigger name. So uh, Pacquiao has, uh, he's got the cards in his hands. We will wait and see what happens. Earlier tonight, we want to show you highlights of a fight with a 140 pound prospect, Demetrius Hopkins. You will recognize the last name. He is the nephew of Bernard Hopkins, taking on Rogelio Castaneda out of Sacramento. And uh, man, you were impressed with uh, Demetrius' skill. Yeah, I was skill. very impressed with him. He showed everything, box good. Got hurt in one round with a body punch, and he lost that round. He took off, came back all over fresh again, just like a season fight. I thought it was a very good development fight for him. So Hopkins was able to win this fight uh, by a unanimous decision, and proving to 25-0 and one Manny. And um, what are your thoughts on what we could see possibly from him in the future? Well, I think he's right up there in the mix right now with the 140 pounders. I mean. He maybe isn't all the way there, but I think based on what he has did tonight, he's probably been raised in a boxing family, been a nephew of Bernard coming from Philadelphia. I think he should step up and he could compete with the top guys such as Ricky Haddon at this level right now. And Jose uh, Luis Castillo. Yeah, Jose, well. all those guys, because he's a tall guy too. Good, basically, fundamentally sound. So he's okay. All right, uh, Manny Stewart, uh, we appreciate you taking the time out and uh, <laughs> hanging out with us uh, while Lennox uh, had other commitments. And uh, Max, as always, it was a pleasure. Great sir. night at the fights. I tell you what, uh, we got a good one tonight.